You've probably heard about this card game, it's pretty popular. Yeah, I'm talking about Balatro. In this video, I'm creating some of the UI and effects we see in the game, and I'm showing you how I'm doing it. The game is mostly UI, but don't let that fool you. It's full of little effects and it's very juicy. Let's start. After creating a simple card with a button and a texture, I want to add the 3D effect we can see when hovering the cards. This is actually quite simple to replicate, not because we're going to use 3D, but because there's a super cool shader for fake 3D on godoshaders.com made by Hey. To make my life easier, I'm applying the shader only on the card texture. If you want to apply the shader on a more complex scene, you'll have to use a viewport and apply the shader on the texture displaying the viewport. This shader is simple to use, you set up the size in the parameters and then you're free to rotate in the X or Y axis. You can also change the FOV of the camera used for the calculations, but I'm fine with the default one. Then we can simply react to the mouse hovering the button and we can lerp between rotations depending on how far we are from each side. The second effect happening when you interact with the cards is a twin on hover. Super simple, I connect the mouse entered and exit signals and I create a tween to scale the card. I use ease out and transition elastic to get a nice and punchy effect. To emphasize the 3D aspect of the cards, Balatro is using shadows. The behavior is relatively simple, they always have the same vertical offset and the horizontal one depends on where the card is placed compared to the center of the screen. We can do that easily by duplicating the texture used for the card and placing it behind. I then simply modulate it to a darker color, which works because I want something darker, so it hides the details. We could otherwise use a blank card or make a shader to fill in another solid color. Then the shadows is simply offsetted depending on its X position compared to the center of the screen. This gives a nice separation from the background and the effect is very simple to use. When you open a pack or destroy a card, there's a dissolve effect burning down the object. We can reproduce that easily with a shader. Fortunately, there's a dissolve shader on godoshaders.com made by godoshaders. There's one thing missing though, and it's the burning edge where the dissolve is happening. I spent some time to modify the shader to add the edge. The way I'm doing the border is by removing some of the size of the border to the threshold and doing the opposite to the border. Then I still use the threshold to decide where the alpha should be used to show the texture or remove it. For both, I use smooth step to ensure I don't have very hard edges as you would with step. Finally, I can mix between the card texture and the burn color using the newly created border. You can find the modified shader on my GitHub or on Godot Shaders, link in the description. You might have catched that I already have a shader on the card for the 3D effect. So how am I also using a shader for the dissolve effect? Well, I'm not. My quick and dirty solution is simply to put the dissolve shader on the parent of the card, in this case the button. Even if I activate it, it doesn't do anything as the parent is not visible. Whenever I want to destroy the card, I simply check use parent material on the card texture and I can then animate the dissolve amount. This is the same as swapping the material for another, but it's just less code, as the material is already set up and I just switch with a bool. A subtle effect that makes moving the card super satisfying is the rotate slightly with the velocity. I'm redoing the effect using a damped oscillator. I made a video about the subject, so I won't go over the details again. I'm basically calculating the velocity of the card every frame, and I use this velocity to calculate how much rotation should happen using the damped oscillator. Again, check out my video on the subject to learn more. Bellatro animates its text and you can do it quite easily in Godot using BB code. It's a way to write text with special tags to add colors, align stuff, add images, etc. It's a bit like HTML. A cool thing you can do with it is add effects. Godot comes with built-in effects like wave, rainbow and more and you can even create your own. I decide to use the rainbow and wave effect combined to get something that resembles Bellatro. Creating a custom effect is relatively simple and we let you do more complex animations. I won't go into this for now, you can check out the Godot documentation for that, it's pretty well explained. The background shader is doing something quite cool in Bellatro. First, it looks like some sort of liquid, maybe oil. I can tell it's probably done with noise and maybe a combination of noise, but I don't really know how. Also, it seems to be warping into polar coordinates when you fight a boss and then comes back to linear. To be honest, I'm not really sure what's happening here, so I decided to skip it. If you manage to recreate the background, please share with us in the comments below. 
Bilateral uses some post-processing to add a bit of pixelation and skyline lines. We can again do that easily with a shader. When I say easily, it's mainly because amazing and intelligent people have done the work already and have shared it online. So thanks to Pendu for making this super cool shader. I set it up to have the skyline lines visible, but not too distracting, and I also enable pixelation to get a nice crunchy look. To apply this as a post-processing, I put it on the canvas layer that will sit on top of the rendered game and I can then use a color rect that takes the full screen with the shader on it. Creating the drawing card animation is pretty simple using twins. We need twins because we require the dynamism of drawing how many cards we want. Let's take a look at how I'm doing it. In the draw cards function, I loop for the amount of cards I want to spawn. Each time I instantiate a new card and I put it in the drawing deck position. After that, I calculate the position by removing instance.size divided by 2 to center it, and then I offset the card depending on its position in the hand. The problem by doing that is that the whole hand gets slightly moved to the left. To fix that, I simply move all of the cards to the right to make sure they are centered. I also apply a different rotation to each to have a nice effect where the cards are more rotated to the outside as you reach the borders of the hand. With this position and rotation calculated, I can add a new tween and make sure to set the duration using the index of the drawn card. That way, the duration for each card gets slightly bigger and we see them move not at the same time. This gives a nice and satisfying effect. If you want to learn more stuff about game juice, I made a course exactly for that in God of War. I'm teaching you the techniques to make your game juicy using the animation player, particles, twins, etc. Check it out on Udemy using the link in the description. When the cards are drawn, they have a subtle up and down animation forming a wave. We can reproduce that easily by using your favorite math function, the sign. We have all the cards as children, so we can animate their position using the sign. We are simply using the index of the child as an input for the sign and using the result to change the position. This gives us a very cool wavy effect that we can easily tweak by changing the amplitude or the frequency of the sign. For the finishing touch, I recreate the parallax effect there is when you move the mouse around the game. It seems to be moving the whole game around and we can do that quite easily. I put the whole game as a child of a control node called Anchor and then I'm moving it around depending on the mouse position. Don't move it too much as you want the effect to stay subtle, not too jarring for the player. And with that, I'm done with this recreation. I hope you enjoyed seeing the different techniques I used in this video. I really enjoyed it, so let me know if this is something you'd like to see more often, and give me your game suggestions. I'll see you in the next one, bye!